from the comfort of their home studio. As always, uh, we have a theme for December, as we have had for every other month. And for December, because it is the month of celebration and gift giving for a lot of people in many different traditions, I am making this month what I'm calling art as gift. Now that can be interpreted in many different ways and I'm gonna try and make it different for us every class in December. Um, for this, our very first class, it's going to be my gift to you of art. And my gift is the artist Henry Taylor. Henry Taylor is one of my new favorite artists. He's been on the art scene for many, many years, but I just, I'm embarrassed to say, recently discovered him. Henry Taylor was born in 1958. And my other gift to you today is that we have our wonderful model, Bill Curran here today. And after we look at Henry Taylor's work and talk about it briefly, Bill is going to be here to model for us so that we can draw from life. Those of you at home can do so, and those of you here in person can draw from life as well. So Henry Taylor, born in 1958, he's an American artist and painter who lives and works in Los Angeles, California. He's best known for his acrylic paintings. He usually does portraits and figurative work. He also does mixed media sculptures and installations. We are going to start with a slideshow of some images of his work that I have chosen. And then I'm going to talk briefly because most of you here, I believe, have heard my instruction on this, I'm going to talk briefly about the proportions of the human figure. Ellen, this may be brand new to you, but I will be helping you learn the proportions of the human figure and how to draw it. Thank you. You're quite welcome. All right. So here we go with our slideshow for starters. Again, Mr. Taylor is relatively new for me. Unfortunately, I just recently discovered him. I want to talk briefly. Oops, I did that wrong. Forgive me. We're going to go backwards. Why he's one of my favorite artists. It is the quality of his images. This is very digitized and blurry, and I think a lot of the pictures we're going to look at today, unfortunately, have this blurry quality. But I love his work because it's so immediate and fast and loose and free. And I think he's a great artist for you folks to be looking at, those of you at home and here both. Because there's a lot of accuracy in his work, but a lot of inaccuracy. Because he really, really, really knows how to draw, but he's chosen to ignore some of the rules that he learned. Because he's more about conveying feeling and emotion in his work. And he wants to get those feelings down as quickly as possible. And because of that, he's willing to let go of the rules and to sacrifice some of the need for perfection that a lot of us hold on to. And yet, here is a man who at the moment is having a solo show in one of the most renowned museums in New York City, 
the Whitney Museum of American Art. So he must be doing something, right? All right. He is African American. Frequently, his work is about African American life. I believe this painting is about his brothers. He is one of eight children. He was nicknamed Henry VIII, which he still occasionally uses as a nickname for himself. He was born in Ventura, California, to a father who was employed by the U U.S. government as a commercial painter. And maybe that's where he got his love of painting from. So the proportion of these young men's heads is a little bit large for the figures of their bodies. Does not bother me wondering how you folks feel about. Okay, so you thought it was a matter of foreshortening? Since I've looked at the picture, I, I really enjoy this painting. I just noticed the ties. I'm like, but they've been there all the time, so it's interesting. They're all wearing ties. I don't know if it's a school uniform or maybe they've just left church or some other kind of gathering. I like that about this picture. It creates a lot of questions in my mind about who these kids are. Are they his brothers? They all look the same age, though, pretty much. Victory. What? It, says victory. In the it does say victory in the background. Yes, he does sometimes use text in his pictures. They're all posing. They do look particularly happy and proud. Laura, if you wouldn't mind letting Mar go in, because I I don't have access to my um, mouse when I'm doing the slideshow. Thanks. I love the gesture and poses of the people and that they're in motion, that catching, seizing of the moment, almost as if it's a photograph. All right, let's move on. He was raised in Oxnard, California. He took art classes at Oxnard College under James Gervais, who became his mentor. Gervais uh, is an artist I know little about, but please look him up. His brother, Randy, was a founding member of the Ventura County chapter of the Black Panthers. Taylor worked for 10 years as a psychiatric technician at Camarillo State Mental Hospital. He then retired from that job in 1997, and he attended the California Institute for the Arts. It took him years to graduate because he couldn't afford to pay full weight, and he went part-time, and in 1995, he obtained his Bachelor's of Fine Arts. So there's a lot of texture in this painting, which I quite like. Again, it's not a realistic figurative painting, but I enjoy this work very much. <laughs> Composition's very well thought out. Why do you say that, Nicola? Uh, well, the last one, too, everything brings it back to the Subject in the, the focus is the figure in the center, all the shapes around it. Yeah. yeah. I, can, like, I can kind of like think about what the shapes are, but I don't care. Because they, they just bring me back to it. Uh, there you go. Um, you Paula, I don't know if folks at home can hear what you said, but she said the shapes in the picture are there, but she doesn't really care that they're there because the focus is on the figure in the middle and the shapes around her help us focus on her. Well said. 
I like the detail of the fan behind her. I don't know. It helps situate the person in a space, which I like very much. I like the drippy quality of his paint, too. I like that textual effect. Go ahead, Finn. They're believable in a way like photographs. Yes, they are very photographic, too, in that he's catching the figure in a moment in time. Yes. I like that very much about his work. All right, let's move on. And apparently he does the work very quickly. I mean, like he can complete a portrait very rapidly and then move on to the next. His largest output of work is in portraiture. He's known to paint obsessively on various materials, including empty cigarette packs, detergent boxes, cereal boxes, suitcases, wow. crates, bottles, furniture, and stretch canvases. His subjects include family, friends, patients, when he was employed at the hospital, Acquaintances, strangers, waitresses, celebrities, homeless people, himself, historical figures, cultural figures, sports heroes, politicians, and individuals from photographs or other artwork. I love her hands. <laughs> Is she in a dental chair, a doctor's office? What is that piece of equipment in the back? Mm -hmm. Kind of like that enigmatic, where is she? Yeah. A lot of errors proportion wise in this, but for me, it doesn't bother me. What do you think? No, but I want, I'm pointing it out to everyone because for many of us, that's extremely important in our own work. The fingers have a kind of comic book quality to them. Her upper leg looks way too thin compared to the lower leg. You know, there are, the left eye is so much smaller than her right eye. There, there are qualities to this work that. A monocle. Yes. A little scary. Yes. At first, I thought it was a, a, a nun, but just for a minute, just for a second. <laughs> But he comes in a long line of artists. Matisse, right? Picasso would have done this kind of portraiture. Milton Avery. It feels like everything in the painting supports the characters, the person. And that's what you're looking really at is that. And even then you start noticing all these other things that are interesting or but and it, but everything supports that being figure being present. The, yes, Robin is saying the objects in the picture kind of tell the story of the person, which is fascinating, I think. I agree. Good morning. Look at our the director is here with us today. Would you like to say a word to everyone? Full class. Full class with folks at home as well. You have to come a little bit this Look, way to see wearing, the folks that are we're both wearing pink. We're in pink. <laughs> well, good morning. Welcome. Well, we good. always love having you visit. Well, we love having you come to the library, this faithful group that's been coming for so long. It's a testament Aww. to you, Liz. Yes, right? Can. It's a testament <laughs> to Liz. <laughs> We are blessed to have you here in the community and well, to thank be such you. a rock. And thank you. I think it's a, a testament to our love for art, uh, even to come out on such a cold day. So. A little cold thing, right, Bill? Yeah. 
No. <laughs> I love Bill's pants. Look at that green. Well, Bill is going to model for us yeah. today. You have to come back and watch us in action. I will. So, so if you pardon me, I'm so sorry. I'm going to cross no, over. No. Thank right. you for stopping yeah. by and come back at 3.30 when I'm working with the teenagers today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that sounds> <laughs> we must have been watching the same movie last night. <laughs> Was it called Barbie? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Director Pugh. All right, wasn't that a treat? Actually, we should ask her to model today. That would be fun. Um, all right, so let's move along. I can't hear you. Can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, God. I think what's really great about his stuff is that he each of his draw his artwork engages with you, the viewer. He like it brings you into him, whether it's the kids or this this man who looks a little bit like a pirate. He, he brings it into you. You're engaged with the with the figures. It's not that they're staring out at a sunset or something. It's very moving. Liz, you're still muted. Liz, you're muted. Can't hear a word you're saying. Jesus. Good morning. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh, how awful, so sorry. Someone should have said something way earlier. Forgive me, everyone. Wow, you missed the whole presentation, guys. Awful. All right, well, we've been saying a lot about Henry Taylor, most particularly that I am sharing him with you today as one of my favorite artists because his work is very loose and free. And I'm hoping today that when you draw from life, we have Bill here as our model, that you try and work very loosely as well. So here's a quote um, from an article that I read about him. And it says exactly that. Taylor's painterly style has been variously described as sensuous, vibrant, bold, fast, and loose. And here's the quality I love most. It is full of empathy, generosity, and love, and the visual equivalent to blues music, while retaining a profound critical social sensibility. His work has been lauded for maintaining an impossible balance between careful and sophisticated art world references with a seemingly spontaneous 
and natural expressiveness. I love the way he uses light and dark in this painting, the interesting shadow on the left side of this gentleman's neck, the shading around the eyes is quite lovely. The bright light in the middle of his face. Folks at home can hear me now, correct? Could someone at home? Yes, okay, thank you. And Lizzie, you heard me earlier, right? Yes, so, I did. I'm hoping you didn't miss all of what I was talking about. Yeah. But if you did, much apologies. Uh, I love this style. Mm. Can you articulate why, Lizzie? I think because it captures the expression immediate, like an immediate expression. And the the way, like you said, the shadows and stuff are not technically done, but visually impactful. Hmm. I agree. And it is that empathy that this article just stated that is what I think attracts me most to his work. And, right. and you feel like you know this person, like you've seen him before or something. Awesome. Yes, it's almost as if you know the people in his pictures. Mm. And Eileen loves the colors. And I hope all of you at home heard what Nicola said earlier, that the stuff in the background in his pictures, and Robin said this also, the stuff, the shapes, the things in the pictures kind of tell a story about the pic people in the pictures as well, which helps you put the people in a time and place so that you can relate to them. He does also play with time and space, like he did a portrait of Miles Davis and his then wife, Cicely Tyson, meeting with the Obamas, <laughs> which of course is impossible because um, Miles Davis was dead at the time the Obamas were in the White House, so. Nicola, were you going to say something? Um, just to show you, to that. Oh, yes, in the last picture. Yeah, which was cool, compositionally. Like, like, like like cool. We might go back to that painting in a minute. All right, so a few more things to say about Taylor, and then we're going to get to work on our own stuff. But Remember how we were saying Taylor is in, in a long line of other artists? He can be part of the portrait tradition of people whom we've spoken of before, like Alice Neal, great American portrait artist, and Renaissance, Harlem Renaissance painters like Jacob Lawrence and Romare Bearden, and the great Carrie James Marshall, who I believe is the greatest living American artist today. So again, I love how the, the figure fills the entire space of this painting. I think it's really wonderful composition. It makes for a very powerful portrait. The repetition of shape in this composition, the almond shaped of, of her eyes is mirrored in the V shape of the neckline, also in the pointed shape of her lips. All of those ovals makes for a very pleasing composition. The red shape behind her head with the red of her lips, that kind of brilliant white shape coming out from underneath the blue of her top and the white of the eyes. It's very striking and bold and pretty fantastic. The black outline, I like very much. Okay, moving along. Um, Taylor's recent work is very much attached to what's going on. Currently, he's done a series of paintings about people like the, the tragic Philando Castile, 
who was shot and killed in his own car, etc. He did uh, a painting about how the centuries, or I shouldn't say centuries, but the decades uh, old practice of only having black caddies at the Masters Golf Tournament, um, and things related to African American um, treatment in the United States. He's had many important exhibitions, including at MoMA PS1, the Studio Museum in Harlem, Art Space, the Santa Monica Museum of Art, the Whitney Museum, the Corcoran Gallery, the Museum of Contemporary Art Los Angeles, the Hammer Museum. And he was an artist in residence at the Fabric Workshop Museum in Philadelphia. Any of you ever been there? I've been dying to go there. He's in the permanent collection of the Paris Art Museum in Miami, the Carnegie Museum of Art, the Museum of Modern Art, the San Francisco Museum of Art, the J. Paul Getty Museum, et cetera, et cetera, the Hammer Museum, and on and on. And here's a quote from he himself. I paint everyone or I try to. I try to capture the moment I am with someone who could be my friend, a neighbor, a celebrity, or a homeless person. It takes courage to do a lot of things, but in a way, it doesn't actually take courage because you're free to do it. It's I've said something similar to this before. It's like jumping in the water. The water's cold, but you just jump in. You've got to just jump in all the, I can't say this at the library, all the effing time. Remember, I say it's kind of like jumping off the edge of a cliff. You have to try. You have to experiment. If it doesn't work, so what? You try again until you create something you like. Love, love, love this painting. I'm not even sure why, but it really, the colors, the shapes, the textures, the way that grandma is hugging those babies close to her side. I just love it. It's like a photograph again. Um, just for that quality. Yep. It's like an old Polaroid almost. Yeah. All right. So our project for today, and again, apologies for those of you who missed part of this presentation when I, I guess I accidentally muted. But I think you got a sense of Henry Taylor's work. Um, please look him up. But we are going to draw from life. We've done this all before, I believe, except for Ellen and I. Yardina, you've taken my classes before. Have you ever done life drawing with me? If not, don't worry about it. We are going to start with some warm-up work. So as with any other skill, you need to warm up. If you've played on a sports team, you know you warm up your muscles. If you've taken ballet class, you do warm up. If you've learned to play the piano, you do exercises or the violin, you must do warm up exercises. So folks here, get pencil and paper. That's all you really need today. I have brought paints. For those of you who are feeling really experimental today and you want to work with acrylic or watercolor paint, have at it. You might want to, though, in the beginning, start with pencil 
and paper. Those of you at home who want to work and paint, if you've been inspired by Henry Taylor's use of paint, feel free. While people are getting set up with their materials, I am going to share the diagram of the proportions of the human figure and just briefly go over that with everyone. Who would have been a psy psy psychiatric technician? That's what he did for what 10 is, years. What is, what is that? I think it's like a nurse. I gotcha. I can't wait to see the show. I know. you. Everybody, his show closes like January 28th. Mm. Get in soon to see it at the Whitney Museum of American Art. Henry Taylor, solo show. It's okay. gotten great reviews. Great. You saw it, Esty? All right. So particularly those of you who've never done figurative drawing again uh, before. <laughs> um. This is an old age thing. Your mind really plays tricks like that. <laughs> Scary. So the human figure can be measured in head lengths, both male and female. And this diagram is a brilliant way to prove it to you. But the human figure averages seven head lengths long. So from the top of the head all the way to the tip of the toes is about seven head lengths, even height challenge people like me in proportion to my head size, I am seven head lengths long. The arm from the armpit to the tip of the fingers is about three head lengths. If it's really long, it could be closer to four or three and a half head lengths. The torso is three head lengths from the chin to the pelvis, bottom of the pelvis. You see that? The legs, three to four head lengths long. This is where we shortchange our figure drawings. The length of the arms and legs is pretty long. So stop and think about that for a moment. The width of the shoulders. So the neck is one head length wide. And then the shoulders, if you were to lay the head on its side, make from shoulder to shoulder three head lengths wide. And one thing I like to do for you beginning folks, you need to stand up, stand up tall, and place your arms straight by your sides. Notice where your fingertips sit next to your body. Notice where your elbows sit. Your elbows sit right at your waistline. Your fingertips are halfway between your waist and hips and your knees. That indicates how very long your arms are. So don't shortchange Bill on his arms when you try to draw him. All right, so we are going to start with what are called warm-up poses, three-minute poses. They are going to be very fast. You are not going to be able to get detail because the poses will change so quickly. If you just do stick figures or scribbles, that is good because all they are good for is to helping you see proportion. Any questions? Do not feel bad if your drawings don't look like people. In fact, you should feel great about that because it means you're less worried about producing a finished work of art. You're more concerned about trying to see what's in front of you. All right, any questions before we begin? Laura, our wonderful technical lead genius artist is setting up the camera so that you folks at home can see Bill. And we're gonna be ready for that in one second. And then we will begin. Bill, you can just relax for a sec. Okay. 
You couldn't ask for a better model. Bill is so experienced. And we're almost ready. <laughs> Bill is being shy. Those of you at home can't see, but he's being adorable. No. <laughs> Apologies, folks. We've had terrible tech problems today. <laughs> Most of them caused by me, as usual. The least tech-savvy person on the planet. Daniel is using his time wisely. Daniel. <laughs> well, those of you who are here are lucky. You may start. If you'd like, I'm not timing this pose, however. You can warm up looking at this. Here we go, Laura. Laura's getting the camera ready. Folks at home, just bear with us for one second longer. I hope this isn't making you seasick. You might want to not look at your screen at the moment, folks at home. I will let you know when you, we're upright. Yes, good. Folks at home, you can now look. Bill, you might want to get closer to the camera. <laughs> oh, no, we've been invaded by chat GPT. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Thanks, Bill. Oh, and Laura's making you bigger. Okay, great. All right. So we can begin. This is a three minute pose. So, Ellen, your Dina, folks who are feeling rusty today, which that's all of us. Don't look at his face or the wrinkles in his clothing. Just try and see the size of his head in relation to the length of his torso, for example. Head length. <laughs> One, two, three head lengths. Yes, yeah, so they're in long torso as well. <laughs> Look at where his elbow is. It's almost bisecting his chest. I don't care what this drawing looks like. It could be scribble scrabble. <laughs> Those of you who've never drawn the figure before, just try and relax and have fun. And our goal today is just to look at what's in front of us and try and see it. So oh, in this pose, actually, no talking. <laughs> Look at where his elbow is on this side. And I see his elbow on this side. They're almost at the same level. Look at the slant of the shoulder downwards, the hips downwards. We call that the gesture of the pose. Try and capture that. And under 50 seconds, this pose is going to end very soon. Right. <laughs> 
Lawrence. The tailor. Okay, now Bill is going to change to another pose. We're doing great. Okay, folks, on this side, just thrust forwards. Try and get this neck sticking out. Or even just turn it over. Bill, not at your paper. Yeah. You're not looking. Look at his hands are right at his hip. Passive thrust in this pose. His chin is over his foot. Try and get this angle. His right foot is out in front of his left. It's a difficult pose. The harder the pose, the more you're forced to really observe and look at what's in front of you. Under two minutes now. We're going to do a bunch of these. The more quick ones you do, the easier it is for you to warm up. Very good. You don't have to worry about his face. Okay. Just try and draw the figure. The face at the end. Gesture. Try and let go of the thought that it's hard, it's too hard, I can't <laughs> do it. Bill, how's your lower back? Okay, Bill. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're under a minute. Mm -hmm. For a minute on this pose, don't worry about the people. Yes. Ten seconds. We're almost done. Okay, Bill's going to do another three-minute pose. It's going, warming up. Well done. Challenging for Bill. Hmm. Okay, so notice the tilts. And to the shoulder. So his feet are directly under his armpit. That might help you. I don't want to 
Well, it's not no, boring it's at all. Boring. No, not boring. It's a great pose, but for measuring sticks that are, are not many. Nice negative spaces, though. Yeah. And this is a beautiful curve here. Hips and shoulders are opposite, so you have kind of a V gesture. It's actually nice and warm in here. It's too hot for me. I was just thinking of how hot it was. Even poses don't erase. Just draw over what you don't like. Period. You can erase later on. I have no problem with erasing, right. but in these kinds of poses, I mean, don't erase. But just keep drawing. These are the ones where you're supposed to mess up. Okay. These poses, it doesn't matter if you make mistakes. This is warm up. Okay, Bill, let's do one last three minute pose. This is the last three minutes. Um, wait, have you, how many times have you had a back view of it? This way. Yeah, 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 that's good. Can you, can you hold that, Bill? Twist it just like that. <laughs> 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 like that? Can you hold that? Okay. Again. So, folks at home, don't erase for these. This is not about erasing now. This is not about making a good drawing. This is about learning to see what's in front of you. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to screw up. It's okay. It's about warming up, getting your eyes to see the lines, the shapes, the way his body is twisted and turned. And you're going to make mistakes. That's all part of the process. I mean, the first time you baked a cake, was it perfect? Yeah. Yeah. No. The first time you roasted a lamb or whatever you did for the first time, it was not perfect. Michelangelo was not born with the ability to paint the Sistine Chapel. He practiced. I did it. No, Daniel. <laughs> he was not born with the ability to paint the Sistine Chapel. That is a complete myth, honey. <laughs> he apprenticed himself to people who could paint and learn. At the feet of the master. We had visual acuity. Visual acuity. Able to
Folks at home, now Bill is going to do longer poses now that we've warmed up. So these, and this is what students in art school do. I used to have to do this every day from freshman to senior year in art school. We would start every class with these warm up exercises. So we're now graduating to the five minute pose. You're gonna do quick, Gestural work first to just try and capture the way the figure is positioned. And with the extra minutes, you're going to go back to add detail. Make sense? Any questions? You good to go? Those of you who are beginning students, I would recommend pencil only. And now you'll have an opportunity perhaps to erase and make corrections. I have no problem with erasure. Back in the day, there was this whole philosophy of art where erasing wasn't allowed. That was the stupidest. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go talk about the proportion and Bill's figure. Um, so, head size, and shoulder one, two, three, four head lengths, the tips of his finger. So look at the length of their teeth. And it's here to wrist. That's a pretty cool one. Look at that relationship. Size of his hands relationship to his face. It's a reminder, hand is as large as the face. The length from the hip, one, two, almost two and a half head lengths to the knee. So this is long. You can see me here, can't see the bottom of the leg. Don't draw what you can't see. That's another rule. It's a great thing to have today.
Those of you who have children in your life, I have been teaching us kids this afternoon, starting with you, big kids, and in the week, just to come and be librarians and teachers. Or the kids. <laughs> that might be a little tip. <laughs> Now we're making Folks at home, we good? You're hanging in there? Remember to give yourself space. Be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself up again. Particularly those of you who've never done this before. It is a steep learning curve. As Mr. Taylor himself said, it's like jumping in cold water. It's a shock. It's like jumping off the edge of a cliff. Mm -hmm. And if you forgive yourself and keep trying, it gets better and better and better. Stephanie, is this a photograph or a painting? The picture you have up. I don't know. Somebody sent it to me and I loved it. It's very pretty. It's If you look, can you see the lights? They yes. Kind of, I thought it was fabulous. Very pretty. Thanks. I thought it was one of your works. I could put one of my works up. Oh, if you would like, that would be so nice. Um, I'll show you what I did last night. Let's see. So look at where Bill's hand that's resting on his leg is. That really shows how long his arms are. So that's a great measuring tool in this pose. Look at where his elbow is, right at the belt. Wrist is in the pocket, bottom of the pocket, stand. Hand on this side is right at the hip. Mm 
Don't compare your work to people sitting near you. Folks at home, don't share your work with relatives. <laughs> Seriously, they are the worst critics ever. They are so cruel and they spare no whatever. They're awful. Just particularly those of you who are beginning students of figurative drawing don't, take my advice don't share with relatives you can send me your work via jpeg and i'll be happy to give you advice but don't share with relatives and stephanie what a fabulous drawing who is this person looks like moses somebody said it looks like jim carrey Jim Carrey. Yeah, maybe around the eyes. Yeah. I prefer the thinking of it as Moses. <laughs> it gives it more gravity. <laughs> well, um, should leave it there. Um, yeah, leave it there. Let everyone admire. It's beautifully Thank done. Thank you. Um, Bill, I'm trying to decide if we should go to a 10 minute or do a couple more five minutes. Well, I'm concerned that our newcomers. All right, let's, we're gonna move up to now a much longer pose, everyone. We're gonna do a 10 minute pose. So now you're gonna have lots of time to go back and make corrections and fill in details. Do you need a glass of water before you settle in for a long pose? That's a great idea. Take a slow. Yeah, slow. let's let Bill get a drink of water. It's very dry in here today. And then we're gonna do a 10 minute pose. I should have brought my water today. Forgive me, everyone. It's so warm in here. We're all kind of sleepy today, too. Okay, same rules apply with the longer poses. Do quick gestural sketch and then go back to make your corrections and add details. Let's, uh-oh, something happened to our camera, Laura. Hmm, did I do something? Thanks. Let's begin.
10 minutes is going to feel like a lifetime, new kids.
are and who told them in the minutes we have left. One minute and nine seconds, Bill. Folks at home, you all good? Ellen, you good? So it's only 39 seconds, Bill. You're almost done. Ready for a big one, Bill? Got this. <laughs> okay, 15. Sure. Yeah, sitting. 15 minutes. All right, so we're going to finish off now. This will be Bill's final pose. Do next time. <laughs> <laughs> minutes and then if you don't want to share take a vote at the end of this book that's oh, bread and work from this week if you want to share we will stop and share if you don't want to share we'll leave you with the 10 minutes but i wanted to give everyone the opportunity to see what it feels like to do a longer extended pose and we'll do 15 minutes get that chest down as quickly as you can and then go back, make adjustments, erase, add things, do the details like his face, wrinkles in the clothing, buttons, seams, shoelaces, textural effects, color if you want. Folks at, home. Folks at home, 15 minutes on this pose, and then we'll see if people want to share. If not, then we'll do maybe a final 10 minute, five or 10 minute pose, and we'll call it a day until next week.
when I will have another art gift for you. If we choose not to share, you can always send me JPEGs of your work. I'm gonna put my email address in the chat. I do try to respond quickly. Could take a day or two. When I was in art school, we used to fight for position. For position? I had to work. Me too.
So Bill, you're under 10 minutes now. Yeah. Folks at home, we good? silent, so I'm assuming you're okay. Yeah.
Right. Raise your hand if you want to share. Yeah. And, uh, and Daniel, your output is different. <laughs> I don't know. Um, who would like to share at home? You could just yell, I want to share, or you could put in the chat box. Going once, going twice. Sharing is the wonderful opportunity to get advice from your fellow classmates. We don't say bad things. It looks like, Bill, yeah. people want to do one cookie sure. at the end. Although some people got up to clean up. It seems. Can I show you something? Sure. Who is that? Ellen. That's Ellen from home. Ellen. Okay. Ellen, show us something. What do I do? How do I do? You must go to your camera and activate your camera. I don't know where that is. It's in the bottom left hand corner. There's a little icon that says video. Little icon that says I see start video. Is that it? Yes. Okay. I just pressed there it. There you are. So I, nope, there you went. There you went. Try okay. hitting that start video again. You did. Okay, now I'm going to, oh, Laura spotlighted you. There we go. Oh, you look at me. You don't have to do anything. Once yeah, we can right. see you, except hold up your picture, Ellen. Hold up your picture now. Wow. Oh, it's wonderful. Are you using pencil or charcoal? I'm using a pencil. I'm using either um, a 3B or a 2B. 
two eights. I don't know enough to know what I'm doing. It's excellent. Two B is you want to try and get a two B. Oh, okay. But you're doing really great. Your proportions look fairly accurate. I'm thrilled for you. What about this one? Have you drawn from life ever before? No. These are great. These are your three minute fast ones, right? Right. Your warm ones. My last one is this, is this one. Oh, wow. Really, really. Wow. Very nice. Bravo. So it's a start, it's a start right? It's a we want you back to do more. I'll see you next week. I'll be back. Superb. Thank you so much. Thank you for being so positive. I appreciate that a lot. Well, we love having you and you're doing well. And this day is my living room. All right. So, Daniel, come on up. <laughs> equal time for equal artists. Where's our gestures? Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. And Daniel, awesome. I, you draw with the Sharpie. <laughs> that takes so much guts. <laughs> you have no idea. And here is the, uh, the, the rest of them. Oh, I love them. Very this is your final drawing, right? Yep. Not only do you draw with Sharpie, but you draw small, which to me is extremely difficult. So Beautiful. really well done. Okay. I tried to say paper. So that, uh... Whatever. It's your style. You're expressing yourself in your own style. Wow. Your proportions are so accurate. Great one. <laughs> Bravo. Thank you both for sharing. We have seven minutes left, Bill. I don't, I think we're done, guys. Let's clean up. Thank you. Oh, so Eileen's going to share. Come on up. Anyone else who wants to share? Heather is after after Eileen. I'm thrilled that you want to share. Well, I'm happy with it. That's why I'm this is beautiful. Hold it up. This is Eileen. I can't. I can't. Help me. I'll help. Oh wow. This is when Bill was in one of the final poses where he was reclining back. You can't see very well. You got the gesture well. Well, your pencil line is light, so it is difficult to see. Beautiful job. Great job, Eileen. Thank you. Woohoo, look at Heather's. Ah. Woohoo. When are we showing? <laughs> yeah, we gotta move this way. Sure Gorgeous. Well. Great color. Great job. Watercolor? Or a pastel? Smell it all over your hands. Very yeah. good. <laughs> Sorry of my life. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. And SD. Oh, I was so oh wow. With your name. Esty. Clothes look real. Isn't that great? It oh. is. That's great. What about my cartoon? <laughs> the other way. She calls oh. her cartoon. Oh, that's a problem. Wow. No, but it's excellent. God is lankiness. <laughs> Oh, Sally oh, says it's a powerful drawing. And here's Sally. Wow. Oh, How cool is this? Very cool, Sally. Very cool. All right, I got to run. Oh, no perfect. It's excellent drawing. Shirley, are you coming? Shirley, whose work we have not seen in a long time. Look at this super drawing. Wow. Wow, Shirley. <laughs> Bill's giving us the figure. 
excellent drawing, Shirley. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, I have. Who is that? Someone at home? Lizzie. Lizzie. Okay, let me spotlight you. <laughs> folks, oh, folks who are here, please listen up and look at the TV screen. Oh. Lizzie is showing her great. Wow. Wow. Look at this excellent use of shading. Lizzie, superb. Oh, thanks. Wow. Bravo. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun today, yeah. Yeah, he always makes challenging poses. <laughs> well, Bill is a good model. Yeah. All right, everybody, give yourselves a big pat on the back. Bravissimo. Proud to, uh, to, of you all. Crab hat. All right, art on. I will see you all next week. Happy holiday season. And 